Hello again. Um, I wouldn't say that this is one of my most favorite lessons, but you know, it's pretty high up there. I really like these rational expression things. Okay, so today we're going to be adding and subtracting rational expressions. So we've simplified them, we've multiplied them, we've divided them, and now we're going to add and subtract them. Just just one more step along the way. Um, so in the previous ones, we first started talking about um, just regular fractions because a rational expression is just a fraction. So how do we add something like one half plus two thirds? Well, we have to make a common denominator. So what's the smallest number that two and three both go into? That'd be six. To make two become six, we have to multiply it by three. So whatever we do to the top, we do to the bottom. Or in this case, whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. Um, we need to multiply the bottom by two for this one. Two times two is four. Now we have a common denominator, so our new denominator is 6, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So hopefully you remember how to do that. We're going to do the same thing except with rational expressions. So with variables and plus and minus signs and x's and numbers and stuff. Okay, so first we're going to start by finding the least common multiple. Um, what's the least common multiple of 12x squared y times x squared plus 2x plus 1 and 18? xy cubed times x squared plus 5x plus 4. Alright, so hopefully you remember how to find the least common multiple from like middle school. But just in case you don't remember, I'll walk you through step by step. So the first thing we want to do is find the, the prime factors of each expression. So if we broke this down into its simplest terms for each part, what would it be? So if we rewrote 12x squared y times x squared plus 2x plus 1, we could break apart 12 and say 12 is 4 times 3. And we can break apart 4 and say that's 2 times 2. So that's 2 squared times 3 and x squared uh, times y. And then we can factor x squared plus 2x plus 1 as x plus 1 squared. So this is all of the numbers in their most simplest terms. 2 squared times 3 times x squared times y times x plus 1 squared. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other one. 18 xy cubed times x squared plus 5x plus 4. Well, if we break apart 18. 18 we could write as 9 times 2, and 9 we could write as 3 times 3. So that's 2 times 3 squared xy cubed. And then how could we write um, x squared plus 5x plus 4? We could write it as x plus 4, x plus 1. Okay, so there's the prime factorization of that. Okay, once you find the prime factorization, you look for what's, what's in common. So you write the product of the prime factors, each raised to their greatest power, that occurs in either expression. So we have to include everything from both expressions to the greatest power. So for example, we have the 2 and the 2 squared. They're in both expressions. But obviously, 2 squared is greater than 2, so we're going to use 2 squared. So 2 squared, we have 3, we have x squared, we have y, why does that say y squared? That should be y cubed. I apologize for that typo. y cubed, x plus 1 squared, and x plus 4. So you include all the factors. So 2 was accounted for, 3 was accounted for, x was accounted for, y was accounted for, x plus 1 was accounted for, and x plus 4 is accounted for. And then you use the greatest powers for all of that. And then you just go ahead and you simplify that big mess of things. And you get 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3. Hold on. What happened there? That is also supposed to be a 3 squared. I see that right there. Okay, 3 squared is 9. And 9 times 4 is 36. Uh, that's why it's 36. x squared, y cubed. See, I fixed there. Oh, I'm a mess. x plus 1 squared, x plus 4. So that's your least common multiple. And the reason why that's good to know how to do is because, you know, we're going to be looking for least common multiples and stuff. Okay, so go ahead and find the least common multiple of each one of these expressions. Those are fun. Okay, and that's a lesson check, part 1. Adding rational expressions. Here we get into some real, like, meat and potato stuff. What is the sum of the two rational expressions in simplest form? State any restrictions on the variables. 
And so I have x over x minus 1 plus 2x minus 1 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, now in order to add fractions, they need to have a common denominator. Right now, we have one common de one denominator is x minus 1. Okay, let's go ahead and factor this one. This is x Uh, that denominator is x minus 2, x minus 1, which I have right here. Okay, now, do we have part of a common denominator? We do, um, so we need to have both denominators be x minus 1, x minus 2. So I need to include x minus 2 on this one on the left. So how do I do that? Well, I multiply it by x minus 2, but what I do to the bottom also do to the top. So really, we're multiplying by 1, we're just changing the form. Okay, so I'm going to have a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have to end up adding these. So I'm going to distribute this through. So I get x squared minus 2x over x minus 2, x minus 1, plus 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 x minus 2. Now, do we have a common denominator? Yes, we do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and now just add my numerators just like I normally would. So I have x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 1. Well, I only have one x squared term. I have negative 2x plus 2x. Those cancel out. And then minus 1 over x minus 2, x minus 1. Satisfied? Wait, there's more. What do you notice about x squared minus 1? That can factor into x plus 1, x minus 1. Ooh, tricky, tricky. So that's x minus 2, x minus 1. x minus 1's cancel. So really, the sum of these two rational expressions when added together are x plus 1 over x minus 2. Now it said state any restrictions on the variables. So what are our restrictions when we have rational functions? anything that makes our denominators be zero. So I have a one here and I have a two here. And that's it. All right, there's another one. Subtracting is the same thing. The only difference when you subtract is that you make sure that you're subtracting the entire quotient. So we're going to subtract all of this, x minus 2. So sometimes when you do them, you can rewrite it as minus x minus 2. So keep that in mind. I'll go through this one um, really quickly with you because I also have one more thing that I need to show you that's going to be new. Okay, so I need common denominator. I can factor 2 out of this one and get x minus 2. I can factor an x out of this one and get x minus 2. So I need to get 2 on this side. I need to get an x on this side. So what I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So 2x plus 4, multiply both by 2, over 2x times x minus 2, minus x goes to everything, x squared plus 2x over 2x times x minus 2. Okay, I make sure, um, I'm just going to go ahead and distribute through, just so I make sure I don't forget. I'm going to change this to a negative and this one to a negative. All right, and then I'm going to keep going. So I have a negative x squared. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and, well, yeah, negative x squared. And then I have a negative 2x minus 2 more, or 2x minus 2x is 0. And then plus 4 over 2x times x minus 2. I'm going to factor out this negative just because we don't normally factor with um, negatives, so negative x squared minus 4 over 2x times x minus 2, and now I can factor that as x plus 2, x minus 2 over 2x times x minus 2, factor out those, so I'm left with negative x minus 2 over 2x, which looks like I should be able to reduce it, but I actually can't. And I know that x um, cannot equal 0, two, and that's it. Answer. Ta-da! 
These are just going to come with a lot of practice and a lot of time um, spent factoring, reviewing factoring, doing more factoring, factoring some more, um, sleeping, dreaming, thinking about factoring. Okay, so the last thing is complex fractions, which I'm sure you've done complex fractions before, but a complex fraction is a rational expression that has at least one fraction in its numerator, denominator, or in both. What fun! So here's an example of a complex fraction. So we have this whole mess of stuff. Um, but let me ask you a question. What is a fraction? It's just a division problem. So we're going to take and put together what we learned about addition and subtraction today along with what we did um, last lesson using multiplication and division. So, you know, bonus, two lessons in one. What? Okay, what is a simpler form of the fraction? So I have 1 over x plus x over y over 1 over y plus 1. Okay, let's go ahead and just work with this one part at a time. So I'm going to work with just the numerator first. So 1 plus x, or 1 over x plus x over y. Okay, I'm going to get this into one fraction. So in order to do that, I need to have a common denominator. So let's see, I have x in one and y in the other. So I just need to move x's over here, move y's over here. So I have y over xy plus x squared over xy. So I get x squared plus y over xy. So this is my numerator. For my denominator, okay, we have 1 over y plus 1. We can understand that as 1 over 1. There's already understood to be a y here, so I'm just going to multiply by a y over y. And I have 1 plus y. Those are both over y. So my denominator is 1 plus y over y. Now, I already said um, a fraction is just a glorified division problem. So I'm going to rewrite this as a division, 1 plus y over y. So we're going to look at this problem right here. x squared plus y over xy divided by 1 plus y over y. What do we say we did with division problems? We change them into multiplication. We multiply by the reciprocal. So I have x squared plus y over xy times y over 1 plus y. Well, I have a y here and a y here that I can cancel. I can't cancel anything else, so my answer is x squared plus y over x plus xy. Do I have any restrictions? x and y can't be zero, and that's about it. Wasn't that fabulous? Complex fractions. They're so good. Um, there are just two different methods. You can look through each one of these. It looks like I did the second one. Um, so if you want to, you can go back and look at method one for, oh, that's by finding the least common denominator, multiplying everything by it, simplifying. You'll get the same answer either way. Both are good. All right, uh, and that's it for the lesson. So I want you to make sure you take those questions that I said to do with your partner. Go ahead and add this one to it just for kicks and giggles. Um, Make your numerator be x and your denominator be the complex part, the 1 over x plus 1 over y. Get a common denominator, you know, all those good things. And we're done. That's it.